Welcome to Horseshoe in Time, filmed live at the Farriers National Research Center and School here in Villanelle, Georgia. Hey, if you want your horse to be active, whether it's showing, trail riding, or pleasure riding, he needs to be healthy, in good physical condition, and properly trimmed or shod. After all, a happy horse makes a happy owner. In 1989, Ralph Casey began using a high-speed video camera and an adjustable shoe to study how to make horses perform better and run faster without injury. Casey became the leader in the field of farrier science. His research sparked such an interest, a group was formed to build the first Farriers National Research Center in the world. The purpose of the FNRC is to continue the study of shoeing and balancing a horse, not only to make the horse perform better, but to stop some of the serious injuries created from improper shoeing. Today, Casey can make the horse perform better and run faster than ever before. Horse owners are fortunate to have access to the only Farrier National Research Center in the U.S. dedicated to the study of farrier science. And here to tell us more is our host of Horseshoe and Time, Ralph Casey. Hey, Gabe, you caught us right in the act there talking about things. But at least what we did, we're, we're going to try to go over because we're going to shoe the horse today. And we're going to talk about But I want to go over what we've already done. And we started off, remember, we took my horse that's well trained. We put him in the round pen to kind of get everybody an idea on. The right the, way. Yeah, these were three shows, gang, on how to stake the horse out. So let's go back and let's show the first. Uh, we took my horse, Cody and he's trained, we put him in a round pen. That was the first horse. To kind of give an idea, we showed you how to hold the horse, correct? Mm -hmm. Went through that. And then we showed about what we needed uh, to start with. And then we took another horse, which wasn't trained, which is mine, that hadn't had these horses long. In fact, there was wonderful people, and I won't say howdy to them. <laughs> they live down close to Augusta. They used to watch our show on horseshoe in time, and they had lost it. They didn't know we had changed stations, mm -hmm. so. Anyway, howdy to you. I hope they're watching the show. <laughs> These are just wonderful little horses. And what kind of horses are they? X-mores. Uh, you betcha. Like s'mores. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and we may do a show on that mm -hmm. and uh, with the wagons, but how to shoe a wagon horse, okay? That'll be another time. But what we're doing now is how to stake out a horse. So we took one of them, and it was a pair, and we put them in the round pen both together. We're going to show that. And you notice the reason I did that was where one horse, they're used to being together, and I didn't want to, mm -hmm. I don't want to put a trauma. Can't really separate them real exactly. well. Exactly. Well, you'll probably have trouble if you do. Mm -hmm. Second thing we did, we showed you how to hold it. You had your gloves on the next time, <laughs> yeah. and you saw how you were moving there. You can see horse was moving. You pretty doggone good, and I was going to help you out. Then we started showing about the stake on our second show. And we showed the stake how this was our my old stake, one of my old ones, and, and I, I don't know which one of the guys, maybe one of the students, but he put this part here up too high, and when you hit it with a hammer here, the you'll notice here you can miss that and hit this and bend it down, and you're out on a that's trail. Where your clip. Yeah, and, and if you get out, and notice this is a little smaller here mm -hmm. than this, so you can see the difference. But this is still you can loop, but I like them smaller about this size. And then this round stock, this is square, which this can be square, but you definitely want this round. And I would bring it, not so close, I'd bring it down to about right there. And then that way you won't be hitting it with a hammer so bad. And then you hook, and then you notice how short mine is compared to this. Because remember, you got to get this back out of the ground when you get done. And the horse is pulling parallel with the ground, and drive, you want to drive this all the way down to the ground almost. So that was the second part of the show, showing all the equipment. Exactly. And now we're going on to the third part. Well, of the, the show. next thing I wanted to show though was the hobble itself. Oh, okay. These things comes in pairs, okay, and you can just cut them in two. And a lot of people, and I'll emphasize this, you can put four of these on a horse, hobble all four feet. By the end of the next, by the time in the next morning, that booger will be ten miles down the road. <laughs> They'll learn to use them. Yeah. But this way here, if you train your horse. This way your horse will be there and won't injure himself. And that's the whole purpose in the round pen, what we're showing there, mm -hmm. whole purpose of that. Then the swivel here, see? Now this really, at least, this is actually, see how that just loops right on there? See, just like that. This, this is really cheap. This is not a real good one, because I've had them when you first start. Now a good trained one won't break it, but some of them, they'll break that. 
mm -hmm. you know, they get to pulling on a little bit, and after a while it'll out. But, or this is the part that pulls out right here. So Especially if it ain't, ain't done good you in You might here. be better off to get a little bit more I'd extensive. spend a little bit more money and get you a good one. That way you won't be tearing it up, okay? Now, our next step is to shoe the horse. And this is the important part. And the whole purpose of this is to show you, because a lot of shoers don't have no earthly idea how to do this. But your shoer can make these things. And if you can't, you can go down to the machine shop, okay? Now, if you wondered about this anvil, uh, you was talking. That is a big old anvil. This is 350 pounds. This is a, a military anvil, World War I anvil. It's got the military tag down here. Anything in the military, they tagged it. Mm -hmm. So this is the old anvil. A guy dug this up with a bulldozer and brought it down here and traded me out of a small anvil. He <laughs> and gave me that. So that can be hard just to pick yeah, up and move I around. I use this thing a lot. Yeah. Anyway, now, you need about... The rope, you need about 12, 15 foot of rope, and that's what I use. You need five, five eighths rope. And you see here, I put uh, this clamp. You can buy those at Tractor Supply or a lot of now, Can you get your rope too long? Yeah, or? yeah, you don't want it too long because you may stake out three or four horses. And they'll eat, you just won't, don't put them so close together where they won't crisscross. And they'll they'll have a perfect, it's like a lawnmower. They'll have that thing perfectly cut by the next <laughs> morning. Now, it's really neat to watch. Okay, now to our shoe. So now we're going to shoe the horse. The thing. Now here's where you take the shoe. If you leave the least bit of the shoe hanging out, even a little bit, that rope will hang on that, and it will burn them back legs up. Okay? So the shoeing becomes important. You Actually, what I call cowboy shoeing, you want short shoeing. Mm -hmm. Okay? And what you do is you want that hoof hanging over a little bit. See? So you don't want that shoe, you want to suck it back. And then I round these edges off, just like that. It just keeps the rope from right. going up. Right, but there. even with the rounding over it, if you stick it past the buttress, and I'm going to show everybody there when I start to shoe the horse, if you get past that buttress, you're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Hang with us, gang. We're going to be right back, and then we're going to do a little work here, and I'll show you how I did this, and we're going to nail this bugger on the horse. Hang with us. Go by the refrigerator. Get yourself a king-size Pepsi Cola. <laughs> Be right back. 